Good evening, everyone. I have six o'clock and a quorum of commissioners, so I will open up tonight's Mashpee Conservation Commission meeting for May 18th, 2023. We're meeting in the Wakoyat meeting room, Mashpee Town Hall, 16 Great Neck Road North. Our meeting tonight is being broadcast live on local cable channel 18 and streamed live on the Town of Mashpee website. Uh, before we begin the meeting, if you would please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before we begin, I will ask for uh, public comment for any issues that are not related to any agenda items that we have posted for tonight's meeting. So if there's anyone in the public that would like to address the commission, this would be the time. Seeing no one, I guess we'll move on to the pre and post hearing agenda items. Um, under our first item discussion for uh, Mashpee water quality issues and initiatives. Are there any commissioners that would like to bring anything up tonight under that item? We're all set? Okay, then I'll move through if you want to take a few of these updates uh, before we start. So for the <coughs> Redbrook Road culvert replacement project, we are, DPW has applied for a couple of different grants to cover the cost of the planning and permitting phases, and we're just waiting to hear back on those applications, which hopefully will be soon, and we can move on to the next phase of that um, culvert replacement. Um, I put on uh, the agenda for Upper Quashnet Restoration presentation with Neil Price. He'll be here at the next meeting on June 15th, and in the meantime, I sent out plans and uh, project description for the um, current next phases of uh, the permitting phases um, and kind of getting into the finalization of the restoration plans for Upper Question. Um, so it's a lot to absorb, but um, as I've been mentioning through email correspondence, if uh, commissioners get a chance to go out to some of the completed restoration projects, Kunameset and Childs River, you're going to get a really good idea of what to expect for the upper question. Um, so that's something that I highly encourage. I could even schedule if you know a date and time where we can get together uh, and do a, a field trip out to one of those sites or both of them. Um, yeah, but, I'd, I'd be happy to lead one at the Kunamesa if you want. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So why don't we do that? Because um, that was a. I just went out there um, last week. It's really just blown away at how different it looks, and they're continuing to take on additional bog areas to uh, to restore them, but the areas they've done so far, it's just amazing. Yeah. I can't even believe how different it looks. I know. <laughs> um, so, uh, so we'll get that organized, work with Alex and figure out a date and time, put, to, put that together out to the commissioners. Great. Um, bylaw Review Subcommittee, we, we didn't get around to meeting this week, so we'll put out some dates for it. <laughs> we'll do right. it again. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, I still need a little more time to get some background on Reg 25 too, uh, yeah. which we had discussed initially in our first meeting about that. And just to put it out there, um, I thought that there were two topics that eventually we could create new regulations for, that being beach nourishment and aquaculture. So I don't think we have anything yeah. on those topics and they're pretty prevalent uh, in our permitting review. So um, mm. I think it'd be good to start researching, see what other towns have on those, on those topics and uh, look at creating a couple of new regs for those. Yeah. So, let's try it. Let's try for the first week of June on that. First week of June? Yeah. Okay. Uh, second week of June. <laughs> I won't be out of the country until June 7th. Okay. okay. So second. maybe if we can, when do you leave? 28th. Okay. If we can't do it just before the 28th, then Look at the before the, the 28th first, and if we can't do that, then it'll yeah. be after the 7th. Perfect. We have tonight... You know, after the meeting, it's going to be short. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting the kids to bed tonight. <laughs> okay. I thought I'd try. Yeah. 
Uh, do you want me to stop there if you want to open up the sure, we'll first hearing? Sure, move into the <coughs> yeah. first hearing. <clears throat> okay. Now calling the 6 o'clock hearing for Prescott White 31 Fiddler Crab Lane. This is a proposed replacement of an existing retaining wall. A representative is Merrill Engineering and Surveyors. Uh, this is a notice of intent that is continued from March 23rd, 2023 and April 6th of 2023. Good evening, sir. If I could have your name sure. for the record. Good evening. For the record, Tim Santos from Merrill Engineers and Land Surveyors representing the applicant. Okay. Um, if you could just... I, I can review it. I just didn't know. I was kind of waiting for Drew to get the colored graphic up for me. Sure. So um, just to kind of give a brief overview, we were here, I believe, back in March, at which time the board had some questions and concerns. Uh, we requested a continuance. Uh, the property is located at 31 Fiddler Crab Lane in Mashpee. Um, property is currently developed on an existing single-family home uh, pool and a nice landscaped area in the backyard as well as a pier. The resource area is on or within 100 feet of the property or a uh, bordering vegetated wetland to the east of Daniel Island Road. Salt marsh, land subject to coastal storm flowage and a coastal bank to the north and east of the existing red developed property. Uh, we're proposing to remove the existing timber retaining wall and replace it with a uh, segmental block retaining wall. We have submitted structural plans. The revised plans basically tighten up the limit of work. It was previously eight feet off the base of the wall, and I believe we were removing 13 trees, so we've tightened it up to be three feet off the base of the wall, and we're now removing five trees. Um, and we now show a kind of a restoration planting plan along the base of that wall along the bank um, to help improve that resource area. Overall, it's more or less the same project that you saw before, just with some minor tweaks to it. We also submitted a construction sequencing um, document uh, from the structural engineer and the contractor. Um, there are a few people with me this evening, the homeowner, the structural engineer, the contractor, as well as the landscape designer so if the board has any questions i'm sure one of the five of us should be able to address them terrific okay thank you um i've got a couple of questions i know i was out on the site a while ago with the homeowner uh, and i know it's awful tight getting around both sides of the house and there was an original pathway that was all marked where the excavator was going to come up the hill from the road? The access way is still coming up from uh, Daniel Islands Road. And is that still the, going to be the access? Still in that grass path area, correct. So when this concrete patio comes out, all mm -hmm. of the debris is going down that access roadway? Um, I would let the uh, contractor answer that, but I assume any debris that comes out, uh, whether it's the wall, um, any type of uh, material or concrete material, yep. would all be uh, put in wheelbarrows, trucks, uh, and put into a uh, you know, the dump truck type material and removed from the site. Okay. All right, um, I'll turn it over to other commissioners and I might come back. Um. There's five trees coming out, and I, I see you have extensive, well, plantings going back in, but it looks like there's only three trees going back. Is that right? I believe there is, and I'll have to let, have Bernice answer that question, but I believe there are three trees plus some choke trees going back in. Hi, Bernice Waller, Bernice Waller Landscapes. Yes, we have three trees, two, um, two evergreens, one, uh, two below. I'm just curious, um, can, can you do two more trees or is, 
Yeah, some of our reasoning for for um, some of the things that we were trying to balance was the fact that there are a lot of tree roots and established trees in this area. So we were coming in with the more dense understory um, with smaller potted material that we could easily get in there. And then that would work well with the canopy that is already established in the area. Okay. And then um, the Tupelo where it is... Um, I just don't, I, I can't tell the view shed, um, is it mostly like down the fixed pier? Um, the view shed. yeah, I, uh, the main view corridor is, is down that, uh, the fixed pier itself. Okay. I just, yeah, I just don't want it being limbed later. So just making sure that the view shed, it has lower plantings, which it does. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, Alex? I do not have questions. Sandy, any mm -hmm. questions at all? Mm -hmm. Aaron? I just wanted to understand, so the, the path is going to be over the pool now? So the way they're going to come in, and again, the contractor and the structural engineer here too, so they can help address it, they're going to come up the, uh, I call it a grass path, the, the utility easement right there, thank you, um, the grass path, uh, they're going to kind of, so I'm going to call it swing a right, and then going to go towards the wall itself, and then they will, I'm going to use layman's terms, they're going to eat the wall up, and uh, kind of eat the patio up, and then they'll go all the way in to the end, and then they'll build a wall as they come back out. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank uh, I'm going to stay with that same idea. So as you come up and uh, this grassy path, we'll call it. And you're gonna eat the patio out and the wall at the same time. I, I just marked off on your plan, and it looks to me like it's just about 10 feet from the edge of the pool, not the patio, the pool, to the wall itself. Am I correct with that measurement? I'll have to scale it, hold on one second. The closest point uh, from, I'll call that the southeast corner um, of the pool, what, kind of over where the diving board is, if you've been to the site, yes. to the patio is 10 feet. 10 feet. And it's also 10 on the, the northeast corner of the pool itself. Just about. It might be a little more yeah. there, but it's, it's around the same, correct? Okay. So, what size excavator is this? What's the footprint of the excavator and the reach of the bucket on it? I'm just trying to get a visualization as to the area of work between that existing pool once you get the patio out. I, I believe the wall itself sure. drops off pretty quick. I, I believe when we spoke with the contractor, I believe the base of the machine is four feet wide. Four. Um, he is here today, so he could answer that question for you, but I believe it was about four feet wide. It's not um, an excavator that you might see on the side of the road for a very large excavator removing boulders. Right. It, it would be a smaller excavator. It's a small mini. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. And then everything underneath the, the pier itself, that's all handwork, right? Remember the day we were under the pier and I was looking up at where it was collapsed? The excavator's not going to be doing any work there? So, that will all be done by hand under the pier? So there is a section, it's shown on the plan, and it is noted that first section of the pier, I'll call it um, kind of, it's just a landing. That landing will be removed so that they can... Um, move through to remove that wall to get around. Okay. Once the wall's constructed, that landing will be just, will just be put back down. Okay. So there, there's no peer reconstruction, it would just be that, that landing right there to kind of access from the patio to the pier. All right. If 
And the existing fence that was there is there was a question about that at our last hearing. Is that going to stay or is that coming out? Is it going to be well, replaced? Well, the, fe the fence would be removed and replaced in kind. Um, I believe it's required by the building department for the pool, although I'm not 100% positive on that, but I assume um, and I believe the owner has younger kids, so I'm assuming he's going to want it for safety. Sure. Okay, I have no further questions. Um, I'll go out to the public. Is there any questions? Hearing none, Drew, I'll come back to you. Um, just to clarify on the sequence of like construction, is this going to be like one part of the wall, rebuild, move on to the next section so you're not leaving any areas exposed for an extended period of time as far as fill and, you know, that sort of... I'd have to let expected? Lars uh, okay. speak to that one. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, Lars Jensen with Inghouse. We did the structural design. Um, <coughs> excuse me, it's probably not absolutely totally defined exactly what the sequencing size is. Okay. Um, you know, the idea is due to the access to come from one side and eat the wall up. So that's probably a consecutive uh, approach. And then just as consecutive, it's going to be a comeback move from the far side back to the front. Um, okay. What the sequencing sizes are for the footing at first uh, is not totally defined. We've discussed it, uh, but there's definitely an interest uh, on behalf of the contractor as well not to let this sit for a long time, right? Okay. We're going to have a potential slope stability issues otherwise, right? right. So they're very aware of the, um, of the site conditions. Okay. Um, and because we're largely working what is now shown as the uh, the pool deck between the pool and the wall on that side, because it'll allow for uh, a reasonable angle of repose on that side, right? That is all stable, like reasonably long time, right? But um, it, it's it's clear that things need to progress, right? Okay. So if it's if it's a half pour and then another half or in thirds, something like that, I think is reasonable. Okay. So do you think, in your professional opinion, it's good to have some form of erosion control be below the wall but out of the reach of, you know, construction activity uh, in the event that any exposed areas are going to be, you know, if it rains or something like that uh, and you've got exposed fill? On the water side, you mean, off the yeah, wall? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it's a good question uh, because if you, if you want to look at one of the structural sections, actually, you see a cross-section of the proposed new construction wall. Um, I don't know if you have that sheet. Sheet S1. Oh, yeah. Well, it, actually, you've got the... This is what I was talking about, the double stakes draw waddles. Yep. Yeah, that's that's all I was really just wanted to make sure that those are in place in the event that any extended period of time, or if it rains and you've got exposed soil, you haven't shored up a certain area, that that is in place. Um, but uh, now that I see that, that answers my question, so... Um, I did mention, too, in my comments about having a separate plan for mitigation, but I think the details on this one are pretty good. Shows it. Uh, shows the yeah, numbers and, the, and the location, so yeah. I think you can ignore that uh, comment unless anyone wants to see that. Um, so Board of Health, uh, just their standard comments of noting the location of the septic system, restrict re equipment, vehicle traffic over non-load bearing H10 components. Um, building in inspector comments saying a building permit is required if the total height of the wall is four feet or higher. Um, and I recommend that uh, the commission close an issue with conditions const uh, of construction, monitoring of all proposed work, and submittal of weekly work site reports and photographs from a, a designated individual hired by the property owner. It could be a member of the construction crew or just somebody in construction oversight. Whenever we encounter projects that are right up against a resource area or right on a resource area like Coastal Bank, we just want to make sure that we have plenty of oversight during that construction period. And this is all along a very steep coastal bank. So that's a recommended condition uh, of approval. Um, and then submission of a signed three-year mitigation monitoring and maintenance contract between the property owner and a qualified wetland consultant, horticulturalist, or certified landscaper. Okay. Very good. Thank you. 
I wish I could just say, so moved. <laughs> <laughs> like, where's Martin? <laughs> I saw you taking copious notes, Alex, so I'm going to, uh, I'm open for a motion if there is one. Yeah. <coughs> I'll make a motion to close an issue for 31 Fiddler Crab Lane um, with the condition of um, weekly work site reports and photos from a qualified individual and the submission of a signed three-year mitigation monitoring and maintenance contract with a qualified horticulturist, certified landscaper, or wetland consultant. Thank you. Is that it? Okay. Yep. That's it. Second. Second by? Aaron. Aaron. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion to close an issue with those conditions on the floor for discussion amongst commissioners. Anything else that we'd like to? It's a much better project this time. Yeah. Too bad Steve Cook wasn't here tonight to see that because it was, I know. His, <laughs> it was his main concern. Yeah. Uh, okay, then. No further discussion. I'll do a roll call vote. Um, Alex? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Sandy? Yes. I vote yes as well. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Yeah. There's no rods in those um, cement blocks on that wall. No. They just sit gravity on they top just, of each other with yeah. the one-inch set off. Yeah. I don't think they have enough room for tie back rods with the pool there, so yeah. nothing that would be meaningful. <laughs> okay. Now calling the 603 hearing for Schooner's Way LLC, 3 Elliott Road. This is a proposed septic upgrade and hardscaping modifications. Representative is Cape and Islands Engineering. This is a request for a determination of applicability. Three, there, three Elliott Road. Is that what I said? I think you called a schooner, didn't you? No, no, I wasn't sorry. listening. All no. right. Three. Okay. Three, three Elliott for the record. Road. Yeah. <laughs> Good to check, though. Thank you. Um, there has been a request to continue this hearing to June 15th. And do we have a time? Time for is 6.15 p.m. Ooh. And that would be at 6.15. So if... I'll make a I'm, motion. Okay. Second. To continue to June 15th at 6.15 p.m. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Is there a second? Yes, second. Aaron, thank you. <laughs> Any discussion, questions, comments on that? We're good? All right. I'll take a vote. Alex? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Sandy? Yes. I vote yes as well. So that will be continued to June 15th, 6.15. Now calling the 606 hearing for J.C. and Christy M. Willardson, 17 Bowsprit Point. Proposed construction of additions to the front of an existing non-conforming single-family dwelling with rebuild of the rear deck. Representative is BSS Design Incorporated. This is a notice of intent. We have also had a request to continue this hearing to June 15th. And the time for that would be? 6.12, 6 12 p.m. 6.12. Yeah. And that request is to deal with the waiver request on the narrative. I'm sure you saw that in the packet that we have. Yep. So I'll accept a motion if there is one. Yep, I'll make a motion to continue to June 15th at 6.12 p.m. Okay, thank you, Alex. Is there a second? Second. Oops, sorry. <laughs> We've got that one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, we have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, I'll take a vote. Alex? Yes. Thank you. Aaron? Yes. Sandy? Yes. I vote yes as well. So that will be continued as well to June 15th at 6 12. The rest of our um, hearings. Should I take these one at a time, I guess? 609, Joseph Campanelli, 20 and 24 Wheelhouse Lane, request for a certificate of compliance. That has passed. 
So we're good with that. Good with that. Yep. 612 Robert, or excuse me, Lewis H. Robert, trustee, 16 water, or 63 Waterline Drive South nominee trust, 63 Waterline Drive South, request for a certificate of compliance, 043-3049. That has passed. That has passed as well. And then 615 Cindy L. True and Michael L. Woodcock, Johns Pond Estate, Association 53 James Circle. This is also a request for a certificate of compliance for 043-3108. And that's passed, passed as well. As well. Um, just a quick note on that last one. Nothing to do with the certificate of compliance inspection or any issues related to that, but um, they are adding a second floor to the home and they are not doing the foundation uh, over again. So this is just simply going to be an add-on. So what I because uh, the homeowner was you know wondering what sort of process if any there was for that and if it doesn't involve any foundation work uh, we still require some oversight through administrative approval and review you mm -hmm. know putting a work limit erosion control those sorts of things making sure the site is clean every day so that's how we're going to handle that okay. um, but just as a FYI for that one nice. very good okay so um, I'll go back then to the updates where we left off. Yep. Uh, I think we're on to John's Pond and Santua Pond Milfoil. Um, so as the commissioners recall, the <coughs> Santua Pond went, underwent a survey from Water and Wetlands LLC who handled the milfoil infestation on John's Pond. And they found milfoil and fanwort um, as two invasive species prevalent. In Santuit, as well as prolific growth uh, during the warmer months of the summer of native um, pondweed. Uh, there's a name for it. Now oh, it escapes me, but uh, it's native. It's not invasive, but it's gotten to a nuisance. Elodia, thank you. Um, it's gotten to a nuisance level where even recreational kayaking and canoeing is beginning to impact uh, the pond. So that was another potential issue that the um, survey revealed. If the town, you know, if they felt that that needs to be addressed as well. So we had a meeting last week, myself and Ashley Fisher from Department of Natural Resources with Jason Steiding from the Tribes Natural Resources Department. They got a grant uh, to, um, from I think it was from the EPA, to uh, address invasive species in there. They want to tackle uh, Sancho Pond. So we've set up a Zoom meeting with the consultant for next week to get that process started. And it's going to be significantly larger area and more expensive than what was done on John's Pond. But with the tribe's grant money, um, it's looking like we'll have enough funding based from that and the money that we requested at the, not last town meeting, but the previous town meeting uh, for funds, which is around $38,000 for continuing monitoring of John's Pond and for dealing with Santuit. So between the two sources of funding, we should have more than enough to handle um, Santuit Pond. Does anyone have any questions on that? Um, Chop Tech Bog Restoration is uh, undergoing finishing up Army Corps review 404. Uh, water quality certification as well uh, is in progress. And then once those two are wrapped up, which should be hopefully soon, uh, they will be, Horsley Witten being they, will come before the commission with a notice of intent uh, from the Conservation Department to restore uh, chop tick bogs to wetlands. And then ultimately, if everything falls into place timing-wise, by the winter of 2023 this year, um, or into 2024, we'll actually start construction. So getting there closer and closer every day, which is nice to see. Um, I did copy all of the commissioners on my comments. The town planner had asked about some what the commission had been doing to, you know, uh, improve our uh, protection of wetlands and, you know, any projects that we've been doing. So I sent a list and kind of timeline general about the regs we've been updating and the current uh, and previous restoration projects that we have on our table, um, that being most recently Childs River and then Chop Shake and Upper Quashnet uh, are the projects that we've been working on and then some other ongoing projects like wildfire abatement. New England Cottontail Habitat work in conjunction with the partners of the refuge. So all of that was put into kind of like a summary timeline uh, for Evan to incorporate into the local comprehensive plan. 
and I think that's coming to fruition soon as well. Um, I'm still working, uh, trying to meet with um, David Whedon from the select board to establish the environmental oversight committee. Um, and I thought that that would be a good committee to have discussion on land acquisition as well. Land acquisition too is, is always is an ongoing, both the town planner and I and, and the assistant agent are always, you know, keeping tabs on what parcels are for sale. Uh, Wendy Williams is all too willing to help us with that process. So, um, so we've got you know uh, a Wait, lot of. Hang on, I just have yeah. a question though. Like, what is the like? How do you negotiate? So uh, we reach out to landowners if they haven't reached out to us first, like as an option, to get the conversation going to see if they're interested in selling, and if they are, then uh, facilitating the application process to the CPA is the next step, um, and trying to. You're rarely going to have, from my experience, you're rarely going to have a meeting of the minds as far as what they consider the value of the land is and what CPA, because they hire their own appraiser. Oh, God. Uh, appraiser. It's so archaic. No. Our process is, like, not, it's, it's, it's just upsetting being in that world every day for, and from the land trust point of view. And right. then seeing a town, like, spinning its wheels, not able to actually do a whole lot. I mean, I know you guys try, but... Um, yeah, I would push back on that and say we need to like figure out s some way or figure out what entity we need to be supporting to be the negotiation arm, to be the true fundraiser piecing it together. It doesn't all have to be CPA funds. Like CPA can be a piece of it right. and then other funding can come from other places. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would like to continue that conversation of just figuring out something that can work for Mashby because um, we are really lucky to have a lot of land, but I, I think, I don't, I don't think we're done when it comes to oh, no. acquiring conservation. No, of course land. not. Is there a system in place with the 300 committee that's more efficient um, that you would recommend or? Yeah, uh, I mean, there's a lot of them, but that's the beauty of being a nonprofit, right? So right. like being, a, like we, we need a land trust for Mashby, not just Land right. trusts that have MASHP within its jurisdiction sure. um, that can that can focus their time and efforts because I think that there actually the, is one now the Native uh, Land Conservancy they is, operate countrywide oh, all of do. Turtle Island is their jurisdiction uh, so they are working on CRs in Alabama they are working huge so oh, okay. um, yes while they are located physically their office yeah um, I they they can't I don't think proactively reach out to homeowners. I, I'm not getting that oh, vibe. Okay. I, I'd yeah. love to support them if they if there was a way to, but um, yeah, I'm not sure on, like I, there needs, we need to, I feel like if we could just meet and talk about it um, specifically, I think. Sure, okay. And um, I also do wanna ask with that, um, I, it's not technically on this, but the, our open space plan Yes. Would feed into this. Yes. And I, I, when I was looking on the website, I think it's from the 90s. Am I correct? Yeah, they're working on getting that up to speed as well. I, okay. I'll find out what the, what the progress is on that. Uh, but I know it's it's being addressed. Okay. Yeah, All definitely. Right. It is ancient. Yeah. yeah. Open right. space and rec plan. Um, I think it was from 2009 or something like that. Right. So you can't even time. you can't. We're not even eligible for the state grants. Right. Yeah, we have to get that. That's that's the key piece to get sure. additional funding outside of CPA. Yeah. Yeah, without yep. a doubt. Yeah. And there is way more money there now than there has been. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah I'll get an update for the next. Um, Great. Next meeting on that. Thank you. Sure. Uh, just to go through, because Dan couldn't make the meeting tonight, but he gave me some slides to show. Commissioners. Oh yeah, the switchback, right? Yeah. So. Um, these are images of uh, the work that the Cape Cod, I'm, I'm sorry, the New England Mountain Biking Club um, completed the work on that trail amendment at the Mashpee River Woodland. So anyone who's been to the Quinnequisset lot, this is what you see if you want to go straight down and cross the river down that kind of trail steps leading to the easement and then across the easement and down into to get to trustees land. That trail is going to be closed off eventually. Uh, to mountain bikers. 
this is the new trail coming out and they cleared a trail right through the woods here which goes out further down so if you go down those steps and turn to your right that's where this trail comes out uh, and then uh, switches back right here down towards uh, the bank and then it kind of takes a zigzag pattern from there so you don't you're not getting sheet flow runoff right down the bank anymore so they did a really they really do amazing trail work. Yeah. Uh, I'm really impressed by um, their volunteers and, and their expertise. They really do amazing work. So this is just another shot of that switchback going down. Uh, this really helps to address what was a really severely eroded situation. We still have to do more to fix that pedestrian trail. Yeah. Uh, but th this at least gives the mountain bikers an option, uh, you know, a designated pathway to use so they're not uh, channeling out the pedestrian trail anymore. So um, really great job, I've gone and seen it on site. They also did a little, uh, some, some storm damage cleanup down here by the river. One of the pathways down here, there was some just dead and down debris uh, over the trail. And then this kiosk, I don't know if anyone has been out to the southern off of Mashpee Neck Road, this kiosk is the secondary entrance to the Mashpee River Woodlands. Yeah. And it was badly leaning this way. So they propped it up, they fixed the footings, and now it's standing perfectly straight up. And this is just the kind of detail of what they nice. did in this piece right here. Colored it to match the existing brown color. Uh, and so everything's been fixed beautifully. Really nice job. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're such a great organization. We're really lucky to have them partner with us. Um, and then Dan's been working with the... Um, high school students, I think in their environmental club, Mashby High School, to look at some locations for additional bat boxes. We have two of them now that are currently existing. One is in the sand pits uh, over by Moody Pond, just north of John's Pond, and there's another one out at the Sancho Pond Preserve. This is what they look like, both of them. Tall six by six posts with the bat, uh, nowhere near trees or anything like that, because it's advised if you're gonna build bat boxes, don't build them on trees probably just because of predator access. So squirrels. that's squ squirrels, yeah. Um, so that's basically what it's gonna look like. And these are just some of the ideas of areas that uh, are looking as available space. That's the open meadow there at Pickle Cove, about halfway down the trail from the parking lot. And then some of these areas of upland around the chop shake bogs uh, are good candidate areas. These are all wide open, you know, uh, kind of good meadow habitat around this area, so. I think there is a bat box in the Pickle Cove field. Oh, is there one already? There is. It might be. I was over there last year, I thought it was. Okay. Yeah, you could be right. Uh, yeah, so maybe I know it's all going to be like blown up for the restoration, but the upper quashnet has loads of open areas that would work for that. Yeah. That, oh, that would definitely be another area that we would look at. Um, it would just sorry. be a shame to get them in there and then like. Oh, have yeah. the restoration going no. and you wouldn't be able to no we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> we wait, to wait. It's all <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely uh okay so nature tours are out for the month of june for renee for dollar our tour guide um good news about the herring runs this year we don't have any official you know final count data but based on what we've been hearing about runs generally um in coastal areas of Massachusetts that they've been way down this year. And some runs have no herring at all that used to be pretty prolific runs. The, the one that's probably the most surprising is the Cape Cod Canal run. Um, and that they said has almost no fish, wow. which is shocking to hear because that's usually a pretty prolific run every year, pretty reliable. Um, Mashpee's been very fortunate this year in that we've had runs, all three of our runs have been very busy. Even John's Pond, which is typically the lowest numbers, our counters have been seeing fish every day there, which is pretty rare uh, for that run. So that's really great to see. Um, and we've been working with, uh, we're going to have a meeting tomorrow, actually, with Representative Vieira uh, and some other stakeholders, uh, potential grant funding sources, and RCS, looking at the whole span of the Mash River from the outlet cage at Mashby Wakeby Pond all the way down to where the concrete flume enters the river at the Wampanoag Heritage Museum. That whole stretch is the portion of the upper Mashpee River that needs the most attention. Yeah. Um, and we've been, you know, had site visits out there. The biggest issue that I see and I've seen over the years with this particular run is that 
from the channel coming out from Mashpee Wakeby Pond to where it enters Mill Pond. And then from there to the beginning of the concrete flume fish ladder, there is no discernible flow. There's no connective current. Uh, uh, and the herring are just getting scattered when they come up into Mill Pond. And that just opens them up to predation. Yeah. And they're probably breeding in Mill Pond, which is not the ideal breeding spot because it's very heavily silty, kind of mucky substrate. Um, so the viability of the eggs gets compromised in that kind of substrate. So I think ultimately what we'd like to see is just a better connection between Mill Pond and the channel going up to Mashpee Wakeby. And if that means you have to separate that out from Mill Pond or, you know, ultimately that might be the right. case. Like have, have the, the channel running alongside yeah. and then have a wetland or wetlands. Pond. Yeah, but it would be bermed and separated, yeah. you know. Yeah, yep. kind of similar to the Charles River, yep. basically. And Kunamest. <laughs> yep. Yeah, same, same theory, same approach. Um, so that's is exciting. Is that meeting like open to us? Like, oh yeah, you want if you want, yeah, that? yep. That's at, um, did I put it on here? It's here? Yeah, in this room uh, at one o'clock, yep. Ooh, got Taylor Swift tomorrow, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you might have to start leaving now. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, but that's exciting, and NRCS said that they have approved funding for um, planning uh, a data collection yeah. planning phases, so we have that. Uh, I don't know what the amount is, but they, they have available funding and we've qualified for that funding. So that's really great news yeah. uh, for that stretch of the river. Um, and then I think that's, yeah. Harbor right. Management Committee, I don't have any updates. I wasn't able to attend the last meeting, um, but uh, I'll try to get some updates for the next one. Drew, I have a question. A while ago, well, it's not on the agenda. Can I ask something that's not on the agenda? Please, <laughs> Chairman. Under additional topics. Thank you. A while ago, we had approved the installation of signs at all the rivers that were going to have oh, yeah, different yeah. names. Do we know? Has anything moved with that? That's a good question. I, that was I a keep historic. Keep looking for them to like see them. But. That, uh, that was a historic commission, right? Yeah, I believe there was a. They were going to do them in blue, and they didn't That's want right. them in blue. The town, I think, wanted them in green. Wanted them all. And then there was a hang up on. The dual language signs, yeah. right? I believe, right? Richard it's gonna be so cool, though. Yeah, I'll follow up. No, I'm just curious. I get, yeah, no, I was I completely forgot about it actually. Um, so I'm glad you mentioned that, but I'll get some updates for that. Let's see where that's at. And then I did send out correspondence that we received from MIPA, um, sent out to the property owner at 90 Pompanesset Island that they are going to be required to file for under the Massachusetts, uh, NEPA stands for the Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act. And so um, because part of that development is in the velocity zone, that triggers a MEPA threshold. And then they have to do a, I think it's an environmental notification form or ENF is required under MEPA. And it could even, and, it could require an environmental impact report if the ENF is not sufficient to address concerns. So, and as of yet, we haven't heard of a date yet for the uh, superseding onsite, but that did come in. That's probably gonna need to be addressed before they even go to the superseding onsite because it's a general requirement um, for review. So, and um, Paul, if you wanna touch on the additional topics, the uh, Commission yes. turnover. Yeah. Um, as you know, uh, every year we reorganize, and I was telling Drew before the meeting, boy, it's been a quick year. <coughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, it flew. Feels they like we just did that. They always do. I know the select board reorganized um, Monday night. I believe the planning board reorganized last night mm -hmm. as well. So, <coughs> um, Excuse me. give this some thought, uh, and I think on our next meeting, June 15th, we should take a, a good look at that. Are you going to be here, Sandy, on the 15th? Mm -hmm. You are? Yeah. Okay. I think Steve's going to be here, too. I think Steve so. just said he was going to be away. Our next meeting is the June 15th? Yeah. Oh, you, have, nice. you have two more meetings until the end of the fiscal year, which is when we try to get turnover uh, voting before the end of the fiscal year. It's so. like a month, a little vacation. Yeah, it is close yeah. to a month. Yeah. <laughs> I like, don't believe it. <laughs> OK, all right. We'll probably have about 37 hearings. <laughs> you know, right? I know. <laughs> but we should try for the 15th, and if something okay. comes up or goes wrong, then we still have the 20th. So I'll put it on the calendar. Okay. Yeah, if it doesn't happen, then we can just yes. do it. Okay. Uh, 
fix it. Okay. Okay. That's it. That's all I have. Great. I think <coughs> anything else that I had under there? Oh, I know what I was going to ask. Last night at the planning board, there was um, there was a group in there uh, talking about I think it was Blue Castle Drive and equipment oh, yeah. on conservation land. They received a letter. Yes. Yes. Can you give us an update on that? Sure. Um, so, yeah, there's like a uh, construction trailer. It's the, the guy whose Bayberry Construction is like the lead on the developer and uh, supervising all the development there. And he has to remove that trailer because it's on conservation land. There was also a skid steer uh, that was stored on Concom land. That needs to be removed. Um, the trailer is hooked up to a power source, and so they need a little bit of time to undo that before they can move the trailer. Uh, so Dan's given them one week uh, to get that done and get completely off of CONCOM land uh, in that subdivision. And um, if they fail to do so within a week, we start finding it $300 a day for each day of noncompliance. It's kind of a ridiculous situation. I'm not sure how it all really started, but Dan's been really good about following up and communicating with, uh, with the contractor and, and getting things uh, into compliance as quickly as possible. There was a lot of other tie-ins to the planning board and you know how this whole thing was rolling. It sounded like a big mess. Now, were there <laughs> trees that were taken out too? Yeah, so they have to do some replanting so of trees. Yep. On Concom land? On Concom land. Wow. Yeah. That's so brazen. Yeah. I think what they did was they made some kind of an access cut to get to one of the lots that they were developing yeah. right through conservation land. Yeah. yeah. And it's like a little tiny piece of conservation land. It's like one of these little isolated yeah. island lots, you yeah. know, in the middle of a subdivision. So, yeah, those often get, those are like the first ones to get abused. <laughs> and they take a lot of time. Yeah. Okay, I have nothing else other than taking credit for one of the fastest moves. <laughs> you, you deserve it. You did a great job. We had some help from those continuous. <laughs> yeah. right. yeah. It was all Paul. It's okay. <laughs> so I would accept a motion for adjournment if there is one. I'll make a motion. To Thank you, Alex. Second. Second. Thank you, Sandy. Any discussion? Hearing none. Alex? Yes. You sure? Mm -hmm. Sandy? Yes. Kara? Yes. I vote yes as well. Meeting adjourned. Six. You can not do even six fifty. I know. Six forty eight. We can still go for a hike. Wait a second. Uh, six forty eight. So I don't know where the order of conditions are. Stacy usually leaves them out to be signed. I can sit by in the morning. Huh? Yeah, uh, we'll just do that. I don't, I don't even know where to begin to look in the office. Yeah, I don't I just, want to keep I you guys here. I, I might come to this May 19th thing. I can sign. Okay. I actually can come to that. It, we were going to leave time. I'll bring, it, I'll bring it in case anyone shows up to that. I'm you can my sparkly outfit. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you don't yeah. mind. Sure, yeah, I'll come back. Apologies. Sure where it is. Nice when they're like that. Yeah, yeah, it's still light out. Right. Where can they Don't get used to it. Can I go to the New York Bistro and get a burrito? Hey, there you go. <laughs>